Welcome to the After The Show Movie Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Ace Scully and Sid Top. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Hello, Sid Top. Welcome to After The Show, our movie review podcast that we do every week. Oh, hello. 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 <laughs> hello. Are you telling me that? Because I am I know. No. I know what we're doing. <laughs> I'm actually sneakily telling the audience that. Got it. Got See it. Got it. Saying? Manipulator. Got it. Fancy broadcasting strategy. Oh, strategies. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is not the before the after the show discussion. It was Planet of the Apes getting a timeline in my mind. Uh huh. And uh, whether or not you would install a smart switch on the fan so you don't have to get up and walk seven feet to turn it off and on. I realize that the seven feet I have to walk to turn the fan off is annoying to me every time. <laughs> the one time a week that yeah. you do it. <laughs> yeah. So got it. So maybe I will do that. Hey, you're capable. We've done lots of little electrics in this house, but nobody cares. That's nope. not why they're here. Well, maybe they do. Maybe they're electricians and they love that kind of talk. They're not going to listen to a podcast about being electric about amateur electricians. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best kind. What are you talking about? Just waiting to see how badly we injure ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome to August, Sid Talk. It's first of August today. Tis on Thursday, August the first. We're going to take a look at a new movie on After the Show, number 850. As I said earlier, we're a movie review podcast. Every week we look at a movie, and this week is no exception. When we look at the movie Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, it's a 2024 movie out now on streaming. It's also going to be on Hulu from next week, apparently. So check that out, Sid Talk. No, thank you. Um, I mean, I've seen it, so I'm good. Yeah, you don't need to. It's rated PG-13, its runtime is 2 hours and 25 minutes, and it's from our friends at Fox and Disney who sent us a code for review. Sid Talk, can you give us the synopsis of the movie Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Well, I can. Thank you. (laughs) It's 300 years after the rise of the Planet of the Apes, and now apes kind of run everything. There's some humans who are trying to, you know... Get back in charge. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. That's the whole that's the whole thing. I'll give you the one off the box. It's not what I said. Shocking. Many years after the reign of Caesar, a young ape goes on a journey that will lead him to question everything he's been taught about the past and make choices that will define a future for apes and humans alike. I mean that's true. That sounds very Hollywoody. Well, it's a Hollywood synopsis. What and let's do you expect? just start off with my number one complaint with everybody in Hollywood. So everyone listen, because now you're all listening to this podcast. Stop trying to pretend you don't know how fucking many years sequels happen. Don't like say many generations. Just say it's 300 years. Do you mean stop being vague? Yeah, I don't give a shit. Like if I go to the Planet of the Apes wiki, which I did because they know and they'll figure shit out, right? They'll tell me I don't shouldn't have to go somewhere else. And yes, I think it does matter for the timeline to understand we're 300 years in the future from when a virus hit the whole planet that impacted humans very badly. It started um, subtracting our intellect and making us not be able to speak. Of mm-hmm. course, some people were immune and 300 years in the future. There are people who are immune. Of course, that's how virusy fiction works, right? You got to have an immune person because that's reality. All of that. It matters to me now when I step into the world and I see a city that's completely overgrown and buildings are rusted and fallen in. I I need to know that it's not been two years. Right. Or that it's a thousand years because I want to I want to be in the world and get it. I don't want to be guessing and go like, wow, is this how long did it take for this to happen when you have no other references? So just put on the screen real big or have somebody say it. Well, it's been 300 years since whatever. Even if that sounds boring, at least that gives me an idea. Or have somebody who's been scribbling in a book, you know, how many years it's been, and you get a glimpse of it on the screen or something, anything. But this vagary shit, I think, is really pretentious. It's like, oh, we don't want to be so benign or whatever the word is, passe, that we tell you how many years it is because we're clever and artistic. Look. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I got that off my chest. I'm off the soapbox I'm good. now. Let me just <laughs> let me just ask you, what did you think of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? I enjoyed it very much. I also enjoyed it. <laughs> I also enjoyed it very much. I enjoyed the original, well, let's say the I was going to say the original trilogy, but that makes no sense because that would be right back in the day. And maybe people don't know this, but there was a Planet of the Apes in the 70s. Correct. That was Charlton Heston. There's about five of those. Right. But I mean, the original Planet of the Apes was in the 70s yeah. and it was this, what you find, spoiler alert, that the planet is actually planet Earth and it has been overrun and is now being, you know, dominated. The dominant species is not just like chimpanzees. It's like all of them not uh humans anymore so that was the original and then you they started dabbling with other ones where you know of course humans are trying to rise up again and trying to bring down the apes and there's always a and then you had tim burton come in there with marky mark and try to do that and there's always the the, the conflict of this story is always if we were so shitty to the apes to begin with and we have been and we are right we use them as test subjects mm -hmm. Put them in zoos. We we observe them as they are, you know, lesser than us. If they were to get sentience, which we now in this fiction they do, can you go back? Is it even ethical, moral to go backwards and say we're going to take it all away from you, or is there going to be a time in this fiction where we find humans and apes can be together? Because I'm telling you this, as with the human world, there's always an asshole. So I don't think it's possible, but that's always the conflict. Yeah. Who's going to dominate and then put the other, like oppress the other. That's, that's the whole story here for Planet of the Apes. But I think one thing cool about the Planet of the Apes series from the very beginning to now, as I think it's always been consistently interesting, consistently good too. I even, I really enjoyed the TV show, which ran in the seventies. Mm. Even the TV show was very good. I don't know if it's, I really like the story or they've just got it right most of the time. I think the Tim Burton one might be a bit of a misstep. That might have been where I was like, ooh, that one's Are you a just bit... saying that because other people say it? I, or... I remember I didn't like it. What didn't you like? About... It was a bit too out there. Well, it was a remake, essentially, of the original so that it was a man who went to space in the current times. Yeah. And then something happens. The spaceship Maybe that was crashes it. It... down. It and was a he's wandering around this planet of the apes, thinking he's gone further afield and landed on a separate planet. But what's actually happened is something happened and he was frozen in time for 400 years, comes back to Earth, and it is now Planet of the Apes. Right. That's all they were doing. So if we didn't question it in the original... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just felt like, oh, why are we doing this again? And yeah, it, and it was felt... a bit extra testosterone -y, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. What, Marky Mark in a testosterone movie? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I, that was the one. testosterone that sounds like a pasta dish. Yeah, well, let's have some testosterone with pasta. Marky Marky testosterone. <laughs> oh, I've consistently liked Planet of the Apes. And I think the story is always cool. And yeah, you could say with it, they just keep telling the same story over and over again. But they do. That's the truth. Since these new versions of Planet of the Apes turned up, starting with the um, James Franco one, the technology that they use to make this world come to life is astounding. I could just look at it all day. Like, <laughs> it, like even today, when it opens. It opens in the jungle, and the apes are just on this little mission to get an egg. But the whole thing, you're just like you're going, wow, I forget how good this all, this looks. Does it look better this time, or does it look the same as the last one? I'm not sure. But it still looks great, right? So visually, it's a winner every time. I'm looking at the screen sometimes, and I forget. And then I go, oh, there is actually no people here. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing here. I mean, it's motion capture, um, people with motion capture suits on but then digitally uh, done. I even asked you during the movie, when the apes are riding a horse, is the horse real? Did, is you, it? did you check on that? I don't know. I saw from one of the other films, motion captured suits people on real horses. Mm. So probably real horses. But the story here in this one, did you like it? After the original trilogy of this, and we've gone through Caesar's arc, basically, we're starting a, a new 
what did you say you said at the beginning? What? Is it 300 years yes, exactly? Yes, exactly 300 years. So Caesar, who he's talking about, if you haven't watched the other movies, is the first ape chimpanzee that James Franco taught to do sign language and think and do puzzles and communicate like, you know, that was part of a science experiment and all that back in the day. And then humans developed a virus that started spreading amongst humans and apes. And that is where everything flipped around and humans got dumber and apes got smarter. But Caesar was the first and wanted to bridge the gap always between humans and apes. But of course, amongst the apes, as with humans, there was always an asshole. And so somebody, yeah. somebody in the ape world is like, screw the humans. They've been terrible to us. Let's just burn them to the ground, right? So then Caesar was the one trying to be the right leader for everyone. And so now 300 years later, different factions of these apes and gorillas and what's the guy with the flat face? You know, all the different Orangutang. types. Orangutans. Orangutans have different interpretations of Caesar's history, which I find very fascinating because, of course, that's what happens. And so now they all try to follow in Caesar's whatever he stood for, but very different interpretations. So that's where we're at here. One one group wants to, like, try to make it, make it all okay and balanced and be good leaders, and the other ones want to just control and be a tyrannical despot. Yeah, hence the kingdom. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Now, if I was disappointed about anything, and it's nothing, I think the film's excellently made. I think that everybody was good in it. I cried multiple times. Yeah, it's just it just involves you, doesn't it? The whole thing. I wasn't I wasn't bored of it. It was just I'm involved, right? But I have a pro. Well, it's not a problem because it might happen in the next movie because this clearly is going to be a another trilogy. Probably we saw the intelligent humans. I want to see the dumb ones. I, I want to see. There's not much going on, is there? I want to see a gang or a kingdom or something of the dumb humans well they wouldn't have a kingdom would they because they're no stupid. we did see them they all flocked to the little stream and they were squatting and drinking water yeah, and looking I mean, like rat. when you say we saw them we saw about 20 of them yeah yeah i want i want to see like a bunch of dumb fuckers i don't think they're gonna be all planned <laughs> up because they don't know any better at least the ones no. who are affected by the virus that makes them like intellectually stunted. So right. I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like happen. we might encounter maybe a dangerous bunch of them in the next movie, maybe because maybe who kind of, sort of, kind of like the zombies from that one movie who kind of figured it out. Yeah, but not fully. You know what? You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Um, is it the mall one? Yeah. Where the the guy from the gas station starts leading the zombies. One of the George Romero movies, right? He actually can figure out to... Oh, it's Day of the Dead, that one. Is that the one? Yeah. Right. Yes, they could make a good antagonist, I guess, in another movie. We come across semi-dumb people. The ones yeah, that but are... I, I feel like a, an army of dumb humans would be very easy to defeat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to see it. I'd well, like... see, you thought of that. Yeah. And what was my idea? I want to see a faction of the apes and gorillas and all them who have risen above all of this stupid warfare and they are building dwellings like what we're familiar with, you know, like not out of sticks and trees, but like refined and they're starting to shave off their hair and wear fancy clothes because they've somehow figured out the history of humans and they kind of like that. And then they're trying to build their power with wealth. I think that'd be cool too. Yeah. Are we writing this shit for them? Before yeah. they even get started. That may be the third movie where uh, uh, where the apes start to turn into men. And the humans are all servants. And the humans are all idiots as well. Like bumping into stuff. And like, I don't want them to all be idiots, but like at least subservient <laughs> would be interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I want them to be like completely like, it, it flips completely. I mean, it did flip completely in this movie. Mm -hmm. The apes are in charge and we're idiots. But like I say, we don't see... We see a, a few idiots, but mostly the we see some humans that are not idiots. I'm I'm fine with that. Strangely, this this <laughs> thing you're done doesn't bother. I guess I like a bit of idiot human in my uh, in this. If I've been told that most of the humans are stupid now, I want to see the stupidity. Yeah, but they they can't. I don't want a comedy. But you can't show it because they can't function. They're just surviving. Right. All you're going to see, are it's kind of like Alpha from Walking Dead, her people out in the woods, kind yeah. of amongst the zombies, right? They're all disgusting and 
barely surviving. That's what you would see. Well, I'd like to see a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to make a whole movie about it, but I'd like to see some of the dumb humans. Or some of the mid, like you say, the middle of the uh, range humans. Maybe they've got a bit of noggin, but not much. I'm not sure what the story element of this would be, other than to just watch the comedy of dumb people. Dumb people getting picked off by apes, I guess. We saw that. What Did you miss that part of the movie? They it were was running? Too, it was too little. Yeah, I, you know, I need, I need more of it. Fascinating that this <laughs> is the thing that you want to add to the world. Yeah. I really enjoyed the story here, though, and... I think it was an interesting way to go with it, with this kingdom and this guy. Well, not a guy, an ape. What we have is the king guy who wants to be Caesar, Proximus Caesar. So he's taking Caesar's... Like I'm Caesar now. Yeah, and his his interpretation is that Caesar will squash all humanity and he will run the world himself like as a... One of those guys. Selfish like, knob. Yeah, like a tyrannical, <laughs> but trying to be intelligent. But what we're forgetting to mention is he has William H. Macy held up in a crashed the, the up The famous ship. actor, William H. Macy. Yes, as yeah. sort of a what you would say like a Benedict Arnold of humans, because he's now teaching this Caesar, the new Proximus Caesar tyrannical guy. All the stuff about the history. He's explaining the history of humanity and all the, the truth about apes and them being held captive and all that. He's sort of assisting them because he now has a comfortable life. He lives in this little apartment with all of his books and everything. And so he's happy to just stay there. So he's sort of assisting and, and coaching this ape guy. Or he's, he's a silverback is what he is, right? Yeah. Silverback gorilla. So we've got that going on. So the guy who's in charge is sort of like a puppet in himself because the human is still telling him all the stuff. And then we arrive at the story when they're trying to open this big vault that's inside of a mountain that looks like where, and we find out, it's where like the government built this big giant vault inside of a mountain. So when the shit hit the fan, they could put all the technology and all the leaders down in there. There was a missile in there too, right? There's all kinds of stuff down yeah. in there. So that is the place where our King Caesar guy, the silver back, wants to get in to get all the technology. And our human that we meet, May, who, surprise, surprise, isn't an idiot human. She's smart. She can talk. She's fine. She also wants to get in there. Nova. To get some information that she needs to help m mysterious other humans that we know nothing about until the last five minutes. Right. Yeah. I loved her story. And what did I say after it was over? May had her own movie going on yeah, that feel, we never even saw. Feels like there's a spinoff there. Where I mean, she... I don't want a spinoff. I just am imagining that there's a whole bunch of humans in the world still did that are fine. Did we say spoilers? I don't Probably. Let's say spoilers because this is spoilery. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's a whole bunch of humans still in the world. And they're just trying to patch things back together and figure out how to communicate with each other. And they've sent a group of people out to go get what is a hard drive, essentially, with the decryption code to get the satellites back online. Yeah, I know. It sounds crazy. It's science fiction. Get over it. May is the sur last surviving person of that scouting party or that party that's going out on this mission. But we don't see any of that. No. And I love that. It's almost as if that was just happening over there. And then I get to fill it all in. I can imagine how it all went down. And her determination... It's evident her journey is, she's not two-dimensional to me. I feel everything that she's had to go everything through. Everything she does is very deliberate. Exactly. Even though it doesn't seem like it because you don't, you're not privy yeah, to what's You don't happened. know. Yeah, you're yeah. not privy to her whole backstory, but I still figured it, I still got it. So I thought that was really, really well done. That's I like that. I was kind of impressed by, it actually surprised me a little bit at the end. I was like, mm. oh, okay. And I... All of these movies are guilty of it, and I don't know if it's wrong, but they all try and set up something else, don't they? This is where oh, we're going. Next. And this one did that. But I kind of like the direction you're taking this. I want to see the next one. So that worked. <laughs> I think the whole thing worked for me. When I first realized they were making another Planet of the Apes after finishing that trilogy up, I was like, oh, haven't we done everything in that trilogy with Caesar? Like, it feels like we did everything. Well, no, because we left the apes in charge. Yeah, we did. But I, I, you know me, I'm kind of, I kind of like that. 
Uh, yes, I know. That's you why are. I want to see the dumb humans go <laughs> <laughs> running about, you know. What it is is a loop story. There is no end, just like with humanity. There is no end to war and peace, and there is never peace. There's only ever war, right? So I yeah. think that's it's a, it's just the human story that we're watching. Let's get on to the cast here. Owen Teague is Noah. He's our hero ape, let's say. What do you think of uh, his performance? I mean, it's a motion capture performance. Motion capture, but I cried multiple times. Also, he speaks. Noah so. was really good. He was, and... A lot of it's down to that, you know, animation on the face. The animation of the face. You don't even have to say anything and you can be sad. Yeah, just absolutely. At it. Yeah. Very Somebody good. cranks up the little tears in the eyes and I'm just like, oh, dude, I feel for you. We've got Peter Macon as Raka. Um, who's Raka? Raka is the one with the orange hair. He's an orangutan. Orangutan, yes. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And he's fun and he's a person he meets on his journey along the way. He's not a person. He's an orangutan. Yeah, I see. I see them as people. <laughs> you get, get what I'm saying? Yeah, but you can't give the people listening the wrong impression. That's true. So he meets an orangutan <laughs> on the way, and he's like a. And if you oh. have seen any of the old Planet of the Apes, the orangutans often turn out to be the doctors, the philosophers. Very wise. Yeah, they're the ones yeah. who kind of absorb, like they kind of look at what's really going on. So he wants to keep carrying on the story of Caesar as a leader of all. Yes. Not just of apes, but a person or an ape who wanted everyone to be able to survive together. But it's just that Rocket didn't know all the everything. No. He's learning a little. I mean, no, I'm sorry. Noah didn't know everything. The young man, young ape from his tribe or clan. Raka had to sort of, Raka had to sort of like mm, introduce some hard truths to him. Yeah. You know? Uh, we've got Freya Allen as Nova. She's the human female. Right, she's also, her actual name is May. Oh, why does it say Nova? Well, because the apes named her Nova when they didn't think she could talk, and then she said, I can talk, I have a name, my name is May. Um, It says, actually on IMDb, it says Nova dot dot dot. See what they did? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what do you think? Oh, she's really good. At first, she's a little bit leaning heavily into what would have been in the original Planet of the Apes of people acting like so caveman-like, you know, like crawling all Mm -hmm. creepy. and But then you find out she's playing a role of a human who is supposed to not be able to think. She's supposed to be playing one of the dumb humans. Yeah, very good. But in fact, she's not. So I had to back up on my opinion of like, you're overdoing it, girl. But then I was fine. William H. Macy plays Trevathan. He's a guy you meet along the way as well. An actual guy, not an ape. I and feel he, like that character's really boring. Like a, He's just a guy who's like, my life will be easy if I just stay here. Yeah, and counsel the apes on yeah, how to I'll dominate the world. I'll be a historian to him and I'll yeah. tell him what he needs to know. And as much as I have liked William H. Macy in the past, I felt like it was sort of absent. Like phone-in kind of? Um. Yeah, if you want to say it that way, just... I really like him a lot, but... I know you do. I don't think this showcased him in any way. Also, he's not in it for very long. And I didn't care about him, and I didn't hate him particularly. I just thought, what a weasel, right? And then then I was like, whatever. It could have been anybody He had no impact. Right. Uh, And Kevin Durand plays the motion capture for Proximus Caesar. What do you think? Really good. I yeah. mean, of course, he's the guy, he's the maniac, he's, you Very know, commanding. he's Marlon Brando in the cave in yeah. Apocalypse Now, right? He's like, it's gone to his head, this idea that I I can rule everybody. The guy that I thought was the really good, who played his henchman? The one with the shaved head. Um, I don't know if he had a shaved head. I mean, he was like the really big guy who killed Noah's father in the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah. That guy. Who was that guy? Because he was really, I feel like it was... Um, Guy from Green Mile? Is he still alive? No, he's <laughs> yeah. not. Are you sure? You're Michael Clark Duncan. Yes. No, he died a long time ago. Did he? Yeah. Um. So no, it wasn't him. Proximus Caesar. I'm looking now. I don't know what the guy's name was though. The if you're looking at this sheet, Echo Darville plays Silver. You know that guy? He's the guy from uh, Jessica Jones. The the dude who lives oh, at, down it the is, hallway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's the guy I recognized, but he's not the guy. That's him. About. That's him. Oh, is that the yeah, guy? Yeah, he was really good. Well, there you go. The guy from Jessica Jones. Yeah, he was good. He was menacing. I felt like he was, for some reason, he's brainwashed by this new Caesar guy. 
to be like the evil henchman who will just kill anybody and and ravish the land to kill. Also, we have to we have to interject here because what they're doing are going out and capturing all um, tribes of apes and whoever's living out in the wild, like our Noah and our the apes that we meet originally. And turning them into slaves, essentially, or yeah. like part of his kingdom. It's the kingdom. And that's what he wants. He wants to be the king with all the peasants and rule them. And that's what they're doing also. So- Even down to the, he's kind of built himself a castle and he wears a crown. Yeah. Yeah. It's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he's been listening to William H. Macy a bit too much, I think, at that point, right? Yeah. He's been telling him about the old kings and queens and the Roman Empire and all that kind of stuff, so. He was basing it on that. Also, Caesar, also from the Roman Empire. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is directed by Wes Ball. He directed the Maze Runner movies, which we have, haven't seen, unfortunately. Do you know what those are? No. It's kind of like, it's around the Hunger Games times. It's like another like trilogy of movies where they put kids in an arena and fight to the death kind of thing, I think. Why would anyone write that again? I think it was another book series that people, the Hollywood were like, oh, that one did well. Let's do another one. Okay. But this guy, he did the Maze Runner trilogy. He's also next after this Planet of the Apes. He's doing the Legend of Zelda movie for Nintendo. So that's a big job. That is a big one with lots (laughs) of minefield right there. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think of the directing of Wes here? I feel like it's a big project because most of the people quote unquote that we're seeing on the screen aren't as they are on the screen they're in a big room with green all around them and a motion capture thing on every bit of little tiny bit of their face yeah and you have to direct a person to be able to go into those in that moment of emotion you know when you think your mother has been kidnapped and you, you see your father being killed i mean all these things and you zoom in real close i feel like Any director that can get me to cry at that is pretty good. And it's a big project. I mean, imagine. It's a big deal. It's huge, yeah. It's as big as movies come, really. It's just a huge thing, isn't it? I mean, it has a lot of... I would like to see the percentage of how much of the whole world is real and how much is CGI. Yeah. I bet it's... Because that's a lot to manage as a person in charge of a big project. I feel like it's more CGI than you think. And and you can't Agreed. tell. Everything's like seamless. You're just watching it and it's all real. In my eyes, it's all real. Yeah, see, they didn't go to a city that's been abandoned for 300 years and film there. No. <laughs> and I'm never like, oh, that looks really green screeny. It all looks real. It looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's really, it's hard to like be negative about it. Were we just in the mood today? We're in a good mood for this kind know. of movie? I'm just always in the mood when it's a new apes movie, though, I think. Mm. You know? They've never steered me wrong, apart from that <laughs> Marky Mark one. I think you need to rewatch that. All right, I will. Okay. All right. The same. Was Tim Roth the yes. ape in that one? Yeah. See, I like Tim Roth. But that was a bit extreme as well. So he was a bit, uh, you know. Hmm. IMDb reviews, what are those? Those are reviews on the website. And uh, people go on there and give it the lowest score they possibly can, usually because it's a waste of time. Worst movie I've ever seen. What a waste of a franchise. It's woke. Whatever. Whatever the standard will be, you're going to find them and you're going to read them to us in a funny voice. First guy says, more plot holes than fishnet stockings. (laughs) Right on. (laughs) The fishnet stockings have lots of plot holes or just holes. (laughs) All right. It says this movie is an insult to your intelligence. A plot as thin as paper blown up to two and a half hours. The whole movie does not make any sense. And uh, the movie makers, I guess it was written by AI, probably were aware of the thinness of the story and tried to hide it by using bombastic music on every scene. I think the movie got one thing right. We are really dumber. That part's (laughs) pretty good. (laughs) <laughs> you should love that one. <laughs> Second guy says, holy snooze fest. This one is rough. So rough, I'm typing this in a theater while watching it. Oh my God. Never in my life have I seen a movie so uninteresting. Yeah, the monkeys move like monkeys. Shocker. That's it. There's also an occasional bird that looks cool. Wowzers. This one hurt me to watch. Hmm. And guy number three says, 
Terrible decision in director. Not suitable to be placed on same shelf as predecess. Big letdown with weak story. Two half hour build. Character, no character, given driver seat. Way to bring down a great trilogy. That's it. Were they thumbing that? I think or were they, they voice were, texting it and then it like didn't really say. They were really one of the say. dumb humans that I need to see, <laughs> right? Is that what you're going to say for now? <laughs> the one stars are all the dumb humans. <laughs> all right. So um, the virus has taken root on IMDb. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, they're the uh, IMDb reviews and uh, I don't agree with those people. So, so there. <laughs> That'll show them. Yeah. Um, we didn't see any extras because we watched the streaming version. Conclusion, I'm going to give Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes an 8 out of 10. Ooh! Oh my god. That's pretty high. Yeah. I mean, I'm going 7.8, but I mean, 8's high. Yeah, I'm giving it It's high the experience, up. isn't it? We're not your standard little grader people. We're not measuring it against other movies, so don't get all upset and be like, what? I enjoyed it a lot, so... That's because my... your number, what would be a 10 for you? A 10. In Magnolia. The... Okay. So this isn't almost equal to Magnolia, no. as in that movie experience. It's just that this movie experience, out of a 10, was an 8 for you. Yes. That is how we score things. Yes, it's very confusing and almost irrelevant. Actually, it isn't. It's very. It's necessary because <laughs> people think you're scoring to measure against another yeah. thing. No. And we're not. No, it's complicated, confusing. Don't, don't say that what I'm saying is irrelevant. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you to Disney and Fox. Next week, we're going to be looking at A24, Maxine. Oh. I've been waiting for this one for a while. You have. Uh, I really enjoy Pearl and Triple X. Maxine is saucy. X. Yeah. So Maxine next week. Movie recommendations, I'm going to give you uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, the one with uh, Angelina Jolie. It's a, I always say it is a um, guilty pleasure, but it's not, because I'm not guilty. I like it. No. No, I like both of them. I think yeah. they're really fun, silly, very of the time. You, you know exactly when they were made from just looking at them. But uh, I think those are really fun. And the reason I say that is the girl in this movie reminded me of Lara Croft every time she was on the mm. screen. Well, we're not going to say girl because she was a grown woman. She's not a girl, so, yes. No. I don't know why I'm thinking she's a girl. I don't either. You keep saying it, but she's Did a... they try and make her look a bit younger than she was supposed to be? I don't know. I don't think so. She's intelligent enough to know how to wire shit up and how to find a hard drive that has yeah. a decoder on it and how to manipulate... Oh, I know why I think she's a girl. Because I'm thinking the outfit she was wearing, I said, oh, she looks like Lara Croft in the outfit. It's the one where Lara Croft is really young in the games. It's like the prequel. All right, well, you're wrong. She's not yeah. a girl. So. And my second. Um, oh, I thought you said them already. No, I didn't. But my second uh, one is the Planet of the Apes TV show, which I think is some of the best Planet of the Apes stuff. Mm. I know they don't go like crazy with the special effects and everything, but it's a TV show. But there is some really, I think it works on the same level as Star Trek. It's like really philosophical mm. and you know, dealing with... Human condition. Yes. So, Planet of the Apes TV show. All right. And mine are going back to the 20th century. That's from 1900 to 1999. I know, it's a long time ago. And I was doing action adventure, but then I ran out. And these are just movies I've seen, not movies I'm recommending as in quality. They're just movies I've seen. They're on the long list of many thousands of movies I've seen in my life. And I think we're going into drama... Maybe, but then maybe not. I've got Country, which was a sad one about farmers losing their farm. We got Tender Mercies, which is a sad one about a guy who's like abusive and conquering his own demons, also in a country setting. We've got Extremities. Can't remember what that was. <laughs> we have For the Love of Benji, not drama, not Benji. Yeah. And then we have Places in the Heart, which is also. A farm-based trauma, drama, sadness of people wearing farm clothes and being hungry and having a hard time in the fields. So. Farm-based. Farm-based. If you like farm-based <laughs> movies. Country, Tender Mercies, Places in the Heart, and Extremities I have to look up. You can look it up. All right. This week, I've been playing a game. It's called Creatures of Ava. 
And then I was going to talk to you about it this week. And then I looked and I, apparently you can't talk about it until next week. So I just want to tell you that I've been playing it. It's out next week and then I'll talk about it next week. Uh, but I've also been playing more Suicide Squad, which I'm really enjoying. It's fun. So, Sid Talk, what's for dinner? Okay, I'm going to tell you what Extremities is. Farrah Fawcett getting revenge on a man. Is it farm-based? It is not farm-based, uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's 1986. It's drama. It's mega drama. Not farmer. Not farmer drama. City drama. Right. Um, and for supper, we're going to have Subway. I've decided because I'm going to go out. i got to go to the store and get some milk and some other things. Because I'm going out of town tomorrow for a couple of nights. So I've got to get you all stocked up. So Subway is what we're having. And then my, what's my advice, you say? I didn't say it yet, but I'll say it to you. <laughs> Sid Talk, what's your advice? I'm not sure if it's advice, but I'll just tell you. All right. I find in all of life, not just recent, people like to think it's a recent thing. It isn't. But if I have something to say that you don't like, or you don't want to hear, that it is in direct conflict or the opposite of something you already think or think you know or that you believe and you don't even want to hear me say my thing because you think it's gonna like infect you <laughs> right or like somehow erase what you already think i would hope for you to trust yourself more and trust what you think you think and what you know and if it is backed up with facts and truth and all that then you know we can have a good discussion if you're just afraid that something that's very delicate, that isn't reasonable, if something I have to say, or I me, mean, not just me, anybody has to say might rattle that cage for you. And it is a cage. It's like you're in a prison of an, of an idea that isn't that strong to begin with, but you're clinging to it. Then that's not a me problem. Me saying what I need to say or living the life I live, being who I am commenting on your Facebook posts or just, you know, that I don't have a religion or I don't have a politic or that I don't like your candidate or that I do like your candidate, whatever it is, isn't, it isn't me trying to attach to something in you and like rip it out. You know I mean? I'm not trying to do surgery on your brain and remove bits and then replace them with new parts. Be willing to hear the other I'm always willing to hear it. And what I find in myself is other people's ideas and stuff sometimes, not always, sometimes I think, oh, I've never really thought of it that way. Let me rethink, right? Let me rethink what I think I know or what I believe to be true. And if this new information helps me see the world more clearly, I'm all for it because that's very exciting. You know, that's that's like mind-blowing to have a new experience with the world instead of the one that someone else decided for you and put you in that cage and that's all you have that's the only surface area you've got to deal with the world no one can touch it or penetrate it never like what's the point right so that is not advice all right thank you <laughs> you're welcome acecully.com that's the place you can go to get this podcast you can catch us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm a Scully, she's Sid Talk. We're also on all the podcast sites, including Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, and YouTube. You can email feedback to me, ascully at ascully.com. Do not email Sid Talk. She doesn't want any of your emails or anything from you ever. And stay classy, the planet of the apes. I'm looking forward to seeing more. And I'm going to say think for yourselves, because if you're not, someone is definitely doing it for you already. 